Okay, I've got a lot to cover, so bear with me. I'm going to try and get this right the first time here, but uh, this is the new Dragon OS LTS, the public R2 ISO. I'm going to go over uh, just a quick update on installing it. Uh, what you see in front of me, or in front of you right now, is uh, is the ISO in a virtual machine, in this case VirtualBox uh, within Mac. Um, so we'll go through the install, and then I'll switch over to, I have an Intel-based laptop that uh, the ISO is also running live from, and then we will switch over to an AMD-based uh, laptop uh, to show it running installed, and, uh, and a couple issues that I've seen and how to overcome uh, to get the best support that I've seen uh, for SDR play equipment. I have a R RSP Duo and a RSP One that uh, SDR play was... Uh, extremely nice enough to send out my way uh, so that I could do the best I could to get support added in there. Uh, I've also got a list off to the side I'll try and run down through and just touch on again what I've added. Uh, but right off the bat, uh, again this is um, the ISO in a virtual machine. Here you can see I've tried to add the uh, little uh, notice about the a SDR Play API that's included and where you can see the terms uh, that are laid out. I've included that in a text file so you can read through that. Uh, you can ignore this when you're uh, trying to install it. The install is the same as you've seen in a previous video I did uh, but what I try to do is make the post install as easy as possible. So uh, post install you shouldn't need uh, internet anymore to fix uh, QSpectrum Analyzer or the problem that I saw in uh, RFCAT, so, and you should be fine. I've I've went through and installed updates, and I really haven't broke anything. I can't imagine uh, that anything would, unless there was a very drastic change uh, that uh, that came out with uh, in an update or something. Uh, let me think. Uh, I have a couple notes here. One thing. One thing that I did notice with RFCAT, and I'll I'll just show us uh, or show later in the video here uh, RFCAT had a spectrum analyzer piece to it which I think relied relied on PY side 2 or something to that effect and I noticed that when installing that that messed up QSpectrum analyzer so uh, I removed that so I'll just make note of that in the description you can see here I've went through I've filled out the questions that it asked uh, the cool thing about this installer is you, you saw uh, previously you could have um, or I could have encrypted the drive so that's in there working so while this is installing and, and this same method you know would apply to installing it in a, in a laptop which is going to run uh, way better but uh, let's see so I have an RSP 1 alpha yeah RSP I'll make sure I get these names right RSP1 Alpha plugged into this virtual machine and you can see here I've now included a, a cubic SDR that I've built from source. Uh, this shortcut is linked to the user source directory where this resides. Liquid DSP was built from source. Uh, I tried to indicate where I felt comfortable saying SDR play support is included. The cubic SDR above is what uh, just in, comes installed in the package manager. I think it's like 2.3 whereas this is 2.6 alpha and then also uh, let me think under other I put a couple links here a sig digger I went back and I built that from source because the uh, current app image doesn't have the soapy module built in for uh, SDR play support so now that I built that took all the time to build that from source uh, I can say that that does uh, work to the best of my knowledge with SDR play equipment I'm, I'm still getting to learn their stuff uh, Spike. Spike, uh, I'm hoping to review that in a later video. That's uh, going to be that uh, Signal Hound uh, support for the BB60C. Uh, let's see. Let's not get too far off track here. I just want to show that uh, I would not expect a whole lot of performance, or at least in my case, if you're trying to run from a virtual machine, uh, some of these uh, applications. You can see here where we do see the SDR Play device um, you, I mean it's you know obviously it's just not uh, performing as good as you're going to see on the running live from a laptop or other maybe there's some tweaks you can do now one thing I will point out is 
if you experience, and, and I'll show this in a video or in the video here in a second, but if you experience a problem where you've got this running and you left click up in the area here and suddenly uh, cubic SDR is just going very slow here, but if it were to crash or not work, I'm not sure exactly why. I think it's because I've compiled Liquid DSP on a, um, uh, let me think, on a uh, Intel machine. Uh, and then uh, I've noticed when I went over to the AMD machine, uh, that would crash. And all you have to do is go into the uh, Liquid DSP folder in the user source directory, and I'll, I'll show, I'll, we'll walk through exactly how to do this. You just uh, make, uninstall, make clean. You can follow the website's directions. It's basically a um, run and bootstrap, uh, configure again, make, followed by make install, and it uh, appears to run perfectly after that. So there's probably something I'm missing where you could build it generic to run on, you know, various different CPUs is what I'm thinking. Um, Sig Digger though, out of the box, uh, I've not had an issue with it. I start up a Sig Digger, uh, whether it's a live machine or installed. Again, it's not going to perform that well in this virtual machine, but it will find the come here. You can see where we have the RS. Uh, P1 alpha support, you can change the sample rate, uh, some other settings that you can tweak, and then you can see you can interact with the radio, it's just not performing that great. So, uh, let's see. So that, that covers that. Uh, let's see. RF cat, uh, you don't have to do anything out of the box now. Um, that looks to be fine. I just have no yardstick uh, to plug in and show with it. Okay, all right, so let's switch over uh, to something a little faster while this is installing. Let's see, so let's take a look. This is the, and if your screen locks up on a, on a uh, live machine, you can just use the username live with no password. I've seen it a couple times where I've had to do it twice so again, this is, uh, this is booted live. You'll get the same uh, notice here about the software and you know, the incomplete language support. We'll just ignore that for right now. I just wanna show you that this is an Intel-based machine. So if I come here, um, let's see, I will plug in the, let's plug in the RS, or uh, the Duo. Okay, this is the Duo plugged in. You can see it sees, uh, sees it here, single dual tuner master. All right, so I cut out a portion of the video there, but what uh, what essentially was happening is I had started uh, Cubic SDR uh, prior to this video just to make sure everything was working. I had RSP uh, Duo uh, plugged in using it. Uh, I then was coming back and starting up Cubic SDR and could see the uh, devices being queried, but I had no device options. Uh, so what I did was, uh, just pulled up a uh, terminal here and restarted the uh, SDR play service. Then I came back over here. And again, this is the Intel based uh, system, so I've not really seen a problem. I'm 
kind of thinking that's what's going to happen for most people. Uh, you've got the single tuner, dual tuner, and you can mess with the settings over there. You can see So I had uh, taken automatic gain off. You can see you can adjust the settings. And I pulled the SOPI SDR uh, play from uh, essentially yesterday, which was uh, the 26th of May. So that had some fixes in there. Uh, let's see. Okay, so that's SDR play within Cubic SDR. Uh, the other one is SigDigger. Let's see. We can see it sees the devices here. It also lets you, depending on which one you select here, it lets you change the antenna options there. Let's just try the single tuner. You can change the sample rate. And we'll start it up. And you can see that's with the uh, audio preview demodulator on FM. Still learning uh, you know what's uh, all the additional uh, spikes we see here and what further adjustments can be made to uh, the radio within SIG Digger. Also, I've tried this out, uh, the panoramic spectrum. You can change the device to the SDR play equipment, change your sample rate, the scan range that you want to do, the device RTT, I bumped this up. Oop, let's see, so what it's uh, doing here, and, and again, I still have uh, a lot to figure out here, but it's scanning across the, the whole range of the RSP Duo. And we'll have to tweak some settings in here to see if we can further refine the and if I had oh actually I do have the mouse wheel here you can see you can see how you can zoom in on a particular uh, area hand on the bottom, move left or right. So, all right. Okay, so that's that's the Intel-based uh, system. Uh, what else can I show? Again, just have a look in here. Some things are installed, some things are sitting here. Uh, and I've shortcut, uh, placed a shortcut to the as much as I can, but this is the Spike software. I don't have the equ uh, equipment to interact with it yet, but that is included in here from SignalHound. We've got, uh, let's see, everything that was involved to, or everything that was required to get some weather. I know people are interested in getting weather information. This is, uh, I actually don't have an R, uh, RTL SDR plugged in, but you can look up uh, information about Auto 137. I've got the GR Tempest included with the examples. You can do GN Radio Companion. that pulls up GR Tempest and 
options, you should be able to, oops, you have to change the file source if you want to do the example. It's in GR Tempest, there's a PNG file. See, that's working. Uh, GR deck. Let's see. It's actually in the GRC folder. Uh, let's see. I don't have a hacker F. Well, let's see. All right, a hacker F is plugged in. The issue I was experiencing was the console was not uh, working. So now you can see the bottom part is being displayed, but I don't have any uh, I don't have anything deck to to check to see how this is going to work. And right now it's uh, set with only the numbers. I think that would be Europe based. Uh, that's not to say you can't add additional frequencies in by adjusting the uh, the blocks here. So that's there. There's GR Iridium and Iridium Toolkit. Let's see. I think that covers the big things. There's, a, I'll, you know, I'll put uh, the Kerbero software and drivers are sitting in here, but they're not installed because uh, that uh, requires removing the standard RTL SDR driver, and that can kind of mess things up. But if you wanted to boot this live and mess with Kerberos, you can make those changes. All right, now let's switch over to the installed machine. Okay, so this is actually installed. The only thing you should have to do post install is add yourself. Let's see. Yeah, so the only thing you should have to do is add yourself to the Kismet group. And then log out, log back in. I've already taken care of Q Spectrum Analyzer. So you don't have to do that anymore. And let me think. So this is an AMD machine. So if you run into a problem with Cubic uh, SDR, this is probably where you're going to have it happen. And actually, let me let me plug in the RSP2 Duo into this machine. And okay. So we can see it finds it. It would look as if everything's okay, but what will happen is you click up here, and this is on the AMD, and then boom, it just locks up. So what I found is, well, that uh, unlocks itself. You go to Liquid DSP. I've left this in here for you. You just do... You make uninstall, let's see, sudo make clean, and then oh, you should. And now you can look at the directions uh, and really fine tune, get some extra performance, I think, with some of the settings that's on uh, the Cubic SDR wiki as far as how to uh, compile this. But what I found is, uh, at least in my case here, 
just doing the standard exactly what it says on uh, the Liquid DSP GitHub page was good enough for me. I did mention uh, Qt Dab, and the developer did make some updates to make Qt Dab work with uh, the SDR Play 3.0.7 API. So you're more than welcome to download uh, that app image that they have out there for that. Uh, I just had experienced a couple issues with it and didn't have time to get back and uh, put that back in here. Uh, I'd rather work a little more with it and make sure I have all the bugs ironed out. Let's see. Okay, yeah, that's what I was looking for. The this as well uh, can be used uh, for weather applications, uh, but I would suggest taking a look at the Auto One Three Seven site. Uh, it looks like uh, it can automate a lot of uh, receiving and then decoding that. So sudo make install. Now we've got the liquid DSP back in there. I come back. And this should be a literally a one-time thing if you run into this problem, but I come back here. And now, now we're good to go. So, and of course that's the problem from where uh, we uh, locked up cubic SDR a little bit ago, but um, so that's the only thing I've noticed uh, when putting this on AMD versus Intel, and that's the only thing I can think of is sorry, I could probably blast this song. It's a good song, but um, anyways, I I think I've touched on everything. Hopefully, you stuck with me to the end here. If I didn't cover something, let me know. Um, this took a lot of time to work out all the bugs and make sure everything worked together. Let me see. Let's see. So let's get back into the virtual machine where we were where we were installing things. We can see that it's complete. You would restart and like I pointed out, add yourself to the Kismet group and possibly if you experience that issue with Cubic SDR, do like what I did with the Liquid DSP and you should be you should be good with SDR Play support. Look at the readme file I've put on the uh, SourceForge page for other information. Uh, I'll put up a description in the uh, or some information in the description. And yeah, I'm hoping, you know, this will be a really solid build, include more support, you know, whether it's this uh, Signal Hound, SDR Play, uh, the Yardstick One, maybe a few other things. I, I don't know, there's so much stuff in here. I'm trying to keep it straight and keep everything working uh, with one another. And I feel like I've went back through and tried to test uh, every application to include things like air crack and uh, some other things that I haven't really did videos on yet uh, to make sure everything is still playing nice with one another. So at least out of the out of the box, you should have uh, a lot of applications that are ready to go. All right, and thank you.